Let's take a trip back in time to unveil how Starscream became a Decepticon, and we'll finally see the beginning of the G.I. Joe crossover when Mars gets involved in the Cybertronian War. It's all right here in our review of Transformers number 13 from Image Comics and Skybound. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Transformers number 13. Writer Daniel Warren Johnson begins the third arc of the series by unveiling the background of one of Transformers' most recognizable characters. Transformers number 13 doesn't have the big wow moments to top what happened in issue number 12. I don't think anything can top that. But there's a lot to like in this issue, and the last scene promises the big Energon crossover is starting to take shape. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened previously. When last we left the Autobots and the Decepticons in Transformers number 12, the battle raged to stop Shockwave from sending Energon back to a Decepticon stronghold. Cybertron was partially locked in Earth's orbit via teleportation ray. The issue ended with Alita trying to trap Optimus and Cliffjumper on Cybertron. Shockwave dead, maybe, and an explosion that sent a chunk of Cybertron into Earth's oceans. That brings us to the current issue. In Transformers number 13, we begin with a refresher that Soundwave took over the Decepticons in the present after brutally defeating Starscream in personal combat. He tossed Starscream's body down into a ravine for the body to just rust and fall apart. There, Starscream's dying mind remembers how he was an innocent Cybertronian before the war began. Oh, come on now, come on. We knew we hadn't heard the last from Starscream after his defeat. You knew he was coming back. Here, Daniel Warren Johnson paints a picture of innocent youth corrupted by the devastation of war to become something twisted and ugly. Starscream doesn't become a misunderstood villain after the issue is done, but you at least understand where he's coming from and what motivates him, and that is pitch-perfect character development from start to finish. So let's talk about that origin story. The issue flashes back to some years ago. Starscream's given name is not Starscream, it's actually, in this case, Oktar. I think I'm saying that right. And he was an idealistic worker who enjoyed hanging out with his friends Jetfire and Genvo, or Genvo. The trio of Cybertronians heard the reports that war and violence were escalating, but Jetfire made plans to leave Cybertron and find his path away from conflict and violence. On this night, the trio heads to Moonbase 2 to watch the passing of one of the massive celestial patrols, an event that occurs once every 200 years. Daniel Warren Johnson paints a picture of peace, hope, and optimism as Oktar, like his friends, is still caught up in the wonder of life. Even the small what they call turbo sex, are a sight to behold for Jetfire, emphasizing the value he places on all life. In other words, these are just young guys that are friends and are just happy being peaceful. But all that is about to change in a very bad way. Later, Jetfire departs for the stars after a tearful goodbye to his friends. As Ulctar and Genvo, or Genvo, I'm not sure which it is, make their way home, they stumble upon a heated battle between the Autobots and the Decepticons. During the fight, Genvo was killed, and from his vantage point, Ulctar believes the kill shot came from Optimus Prime. Yep, that's right. In this incarnation anyway, the setup that turns Starscream from an innocent to a villain is a basic revenge ploy against the Autobots. But it works. Arguably, yes, you could say that it's a little too on the nose, it's a little too uh, simplistic, but yeah, it works. The art, as presented, does seem to confirm Optimus Prime killed Genvo, but Genvo picked up a blaster when the fight broke out and started firing in the Autobot's direction. So, the kill shot, at least from Optimus' point of view, was justified. The issue concludes with the big moment everyone has been waiting for. Employees of Mars, that's M-A-R-S, are recovering Starscream's body from the ravine where Soundwave left him after their personal combat trial. What are they going to do with the body? We don't know. But now we have a Decepticon being brought more fully into the conflict between G.I. Joe, Cobra, and Destro. Overall, Transformers number 13 gives readers a thorough version of Starscream's origin story that makes him relatable and sympathetic, but not so much that you can forgive his evil ways. Daniel Warren Johnson continues to prove yet again that he knows these characters inside and out, and he's determined to give you entertaining, engaging, and in some cases even mature and thought-provoking stories. Let's switch gears a second and talk about the art. Uh, well, okay, Jorge Corona is off this issue in favor of guest artist Jason Howard. Does the artwork suffer as a result of Corona's absence? Well, 
Honestly, a little bit, but not a lot. Howard's style is not nearly as distinctive or even, you could say, whimsical as Corona's typical flair, so you get a more traditional-looking Transformers comic. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but Howard's visuals have a little less personality than you might be accustomed to with this series. So it's great, or good to great, but not on that same level, so it feels a little less than what you're used to. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture because that last scene is very telling. The big deal development in this issue is the arrival of Mars personnel to salvage Starscream's body. Since the series began, we've only seen one G.I. Joe character, and then only briefly. It was Duke, and I think it was issue number two. This issue could be the signal that the long-awaited crossover for the interconnected Energon universe is starting to pick up steam. Final thoughts, what do we think about Transformers number 13 from Image Comics and Skybound? It's an excellent issue that gives readers a background on Starscream's origin as a Decepticon and signals greater involvement of G.I. Joe moving forward. Daniel Warren Johnson's script reaffirms how well he knows these characters, and Jason Howard's guest art is satisfactory, maybe even a little bit better. So overall, this was a solid issue from start to finish. Therefore, Transformers number 13 earns an 8.5 out of 10. It's almost too much to ask for this issue to top the world-shaking spectacle of issue number 12, but it gets pretty close. What do you think? Are you a die-hard Transformers fan? Leave a thumbs up if you are, and drop a comment below with your theories about the plot of the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover that's starting to brew and come together. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.